So this is the problem on the merry-go-round. It says two loudspeakers are mounted on a merry-go-round whose radius is 9.1 meters. So I think I want to make this a little thicker here. So there is a radius of 9.01 meters. When stationary, the speakers both play a tone whose frequency is 100 hertz. So F equals 100.0 hertz. As the drawing illustrates, they are situated at opposite ends of, of a diameter. The speed of sound is 343 meters per second. Whoa, they give this in five significant figures. We don't need it that much. And the merry-go-round revolves once every 20 seconds. So T, capital T, for uh, one rotation of the merry-go-round is 20.0 seconds. What is the beat frequency that is detected by a listener when the merry-go-round is near the position shown? So they have a certain frequency here but the loudspeakers but what the listener hears from this one over here is a frequency f o for the second loudspeaker or for the one on the right so f o r and then the listener also hears frequency f o observer from the loudspeaker on the left and of course the beat frequency is, well, let's see which one is larger. This one is going to be larger here. This one is going to be smaller. So I subtract FOR minus FOL just to get a positive number. Even if we got a negative number, it would be the same result. It's just I divided. Uh, I'm sorry, I subtract it in the other way. It's still the same number either way. So that's what we're supposed to figure out, the beat frequency. these two here. Okay. On the right hand side, the loudspeaker is approaching the observer, so it's FOR equals FS source frequency. Oops, I should write S right there. S frequency of the source. Divided by 1 minus the velocity of the source divided by the speed of sound. And FOL here equals F of S divided by 1. And now we have to pay attention that the one on the left is receding from the observer. So it's going to be plus VS, the velocity of the source divided by the speed of sound. So for FOL we're going to come up with a denominator larger than 1 which means an overall fraction that is reducing the frequency that the observer hears so that makes sense. Um, receding source means a lower frequency heard by the observer and then the other one again smaller than 1 denominator gives us a frequency observed, listened to, that is larger than the original frequency. That makes sense because that loudspeaker is approaching. We have to figure out, though, what is the speed of the source. It's the same for either one of them, but we have to figure out what it is. And that, of course, is the speed of the source equals distance divided by time. Notice that the time is given here. So that one is going to be divide by 20.0 seconds for one full rotation which is 2 pi r respectively 2 pi times 9.01 meters and that comes out to 2 pi 9.01 divided by 20 seconds comes out to around at 2.83 meters per second. And then the rest is simply 
plugging in numbers. So I can just say here, okay, you're going to come up with an answer there. And it's all base units and standard units. So it's going to come out in hertz. So this is about the cello. And the problem says, on a cello, the string with the largest linear density is the C string. This string produces a fundamental frequency of 65.4 hertz and has a length of 0.8 meters between the two fixed ends. Find the tension in the string. I do realize that this is a violin, not a cello, but as far as a free image goes, that's all I could find. And let's listen to it for a moment. Okay. So it says it has a linear density, mass over length, and this this is not two separate numbers, mass and length, but it's just one number. So this one is given as one point five six ten to the negative two kilograms per meter. I guess we could figure out uh, each of those numbers because actually the length is given as 0 0.8 meters. Oh, better write that down. L equals 0 0.800 0 meters. Okay, then it plays a fundamental frequency of 65.4 hertz. So F equals 65.4 hertz. And that should be called F1 because it's the fundamental frequency. And the string, therefore, would, would vibrate like this in its fundamental frequency. Of course, it does vibrate in the other of the other harmonics as well, and that gives it that particular sound to that instrument, in this case the cello, because otherwise if it wouldn't do that, it would really just sound like a boring tuning fork, but fortunately musical instruments play all these harmonics, all these fundamental frequency, and then twice that frequency, three times the frequency, and it gives it that certain timbre, timbre that then makes that beautiful sound if somebody is able to play that instrument right. Okay, let's see what we're actually supposed to figure out, which is find the tension in the string. So tension is a force, so I'm going to write it as FT equals question mark. Okay, for that we have to go back just one chapter uh, where we notice that the tension of the string figures into the speed of sound or speed of wave along that string. So it's going to be V equals FT divided by M over L. Take the square root and then of course this is what we're supposed to figure out. So I'm going to solve for it. Whoops, that was odd. Try that again. There. So therefore, f of t equals ml times v squared, and that's the speed. of the wave along the string, and that one we have to figure out. Well, V equals wavelength times frequency. Frequency is given. Wavelength is virtually given. Notice that in the fundamental frequency, half of the wavelength shows up on the string. For a string, of length L, so therefore this one is 2 times 
L. Uh, did I make a mistake there? No, no, I didn't. Uh, if this is half the wavelength for the length L, then of course one full wavelength here is going to be 2L. So times that times frequency. So that's the speed of the wave along the string. So this one here is going to be M over L. And again, this is not two separate numbers, but it's this one up here. M over L is just one variable times parentheses 2 times L times F and that needs to be squared and again everything is in base units or standard units so it's going to come out to the standard unit for force which is going to be in Newtons. This is the problem about the ear canal so it says sound enters the ear, travels through the auditory canal, canal and reaches the eardrum. The auditory canal is approximately a tube open at only one end. The other end is closed by the eardrum. A typical length of the auditory canal in an adult is about 2.9 centimeters. So we have see I'm gonna call that L equals 0 0.029 yeah it's in 0 0.029 meters a little more than an inch and that makes sense if we look at this right here it looks a little bit more than an inch and then it says the speed of sound is as usual 343 meters per second what is the fundamental frequency of the canal. Interestingly, the fundamental frequency in the f is in the frequency range where human hearing is most sensitive. So they're asking what is the fundamental frequency of the canal, so F1 equals question mark. So it said that the... I'm trying to sh shift this in here that the ear canal is supposed to be taken as closed on one end and open on the other one. So that's the kind of scenario we get. So at the fundamental frequency, one quarter of a wavelength fits in there. So L equals one quarter of a wavelength. And then of course the speed of sound equals wavelength times frequency, which in this case would then be four times the length of the ear canal times the fundamental frequency. So, and then, uh, oh yeah, and then of course we have to solve for that fundamental frequency. So that's going to be V divided by 4L. Everything is given in base units or standard units, so it's going to also come out in the standard unit for frequency, which is hertz.